Green criminology is the study of environmental harms um, and looking at how these harms should be examined by criminologists. There are four ways in which criminologists look at these environmental harms. Uh, first, we look at the scope and extent uh, and volume of the uh, crimes committed by corporations and governments. Uh, secondly, we look at the environment, uh, what are called environmental justice issues, that is how race, class, and gender are related to uh, uh, negative environmental outcomes such as the placement of hazardous waste sites in communities. Uh, we also look at issues involving the vast victimization that are caused by green crime. So we look at uh, human victims, non-human victims, and ecosystem victims. Um, the study of green criminology was uh, originated in 1990 when I published the first article on this issue focusing on the unification of green theories and Marxian political economic analysis to try and draw in environmental issues into criminology. Um, my interest in green criminology came from a couple of different uh, sources. Growing up, I was uh, uh, a child of the uh, environmental era, so we were uh, kind of always pushed to consider these environmental issues in school, and I took an interest in those. Uh, my father, who was a professor of toxicology and pharmacology, also had an interest in environmental issues, and I was influenced by that. And one of my best friends, who is now a professor of biology, was also interested in environmental issues. So all those things kind of came together. My two recent books focus on political economy and green criminology. And political economy looks at how economic systems and organizations affect outcomes, in this case the outcome of green crime. So the question is, how is economic organization cause green crimes to occur? A political economic analysis, as I said before, is an analysis of economic organization and how uh, the economic organization affects society. The treadmill of production is a specific form of the uh, uh, of political economy. It emerged in the United States following World War II, and the idea of the treadmill is the idea of an economic system constantly in motion on a tread. The idea is it's on a treadmill. Um, and uh, following World War II, there were a number of changes in production that occurred that accelerated the pace of the treadmill of production. In, in uh, my most recent book, we talk about the idea of a green revolution in the sense that we're trying to uh, make criminologists realize that it's very important to look at these green crimes and green justice and green law issues. And that really beyond uh, the issues that criminologists tend to study, street crimes, these, these uh, behaviors have great impacts on society and in many cases are leading to the destruction of society. So some of the contemporary issues we can think of in this context such as global warming, uh, global warming is a form of green crime occurring in different ways that via, through violations of law or because of the structure of law uh, leading us to a situation in which society is beginning to collapse. Part of, part of the point of green criminology is to draw the attention of people engaged in policy and lawmaking to these issues of ecological destruction because they do have such great impacts on society. Impacts that we don't normally consider. So for example, uh, on a given day in the United States, one-third of the population is exposed to air pollution that violates the law, meaning that they're being victimized by a green crime caused by uh, corporate pollution. And when you talk about a third of the American population, you're talking about a hundred million people a day being exposed to these kinds of uh, negative pollution problems that obviously cause extensive um, health issues for people. So you have rising rates of cancer, uh, lung diseases, so there's a whole range of uh, negative outcomes for people that uh, really need to be addressed. And the role of criminologists in doing that is to bring an extra voice to this discussion and to uh, make uh, lawmakers realize that this is not just a kind of sideline issue that you know we should protect the environment if we can. Right, it's really important to protect the environment because, again, public health and and the global health of the, uh, the, the and global health is also dependent upon this.
Um, green criminology has a natural affinity to the global mission of the University of South Florida. Green crimes occur everywhere and one of the biggest green crimes that we see in the world today, things like climate change and extensive levels of pollution are global matters that solving those require uh, the cooperation of governments across the world and so part of working on that is working on these kinds of issues as has to how governments, universities and other agencies get involved in solving these global problems. One of the things that we're, we're trying to work on is again expanding this movement um, and so again working uh, with the International Green Criminology uh, Working Group and bringing more criminologists uh, into doing research on these issues, uh, trying to fund some initiatives for uh, graduate students who, get, who are interested in these uh, events. So, uh, trying to raise some small, you know, small amounts of capital so that the, uh, that as a group we can fund graduate students to go to conferences and engage in these uh, discussions with uh, their criminological colleagues, for example. You know, it's hard, it's hard to change a discipline, so the plan is a slow, long plan, and it's been unfolding for now 25 years. So for, uh, one of the questions that people often ask is, what do you do when you study green criminology after you graduate? Um, for undergraduates, a number of them go into environmental enforcement agencies. And they, because they have an interest in preserving the environment, and so this kind of fits with their interest. Now, normally in a criminology department, these are not classes that those students would get. So uh, here we probably generate more students who are interested in those issues. Uh, for graduate students, again, part of the interest is in joining agencies that enforce environmental regulations. So uh, for some of those students, they will join uh, federal agencies. And uh, for students who are really involved in this, they want to continue uh, on and uh, address these issues in research. Uh, in terms of uh, undergraduate classes, I teach a couple of different seminars that expose students to uh, major issues related to green crimes and their forms. And one of the things that students always kind of marvel at is that there's so many of these uh, crimes to talk about. So for example, uh, one of the things that students are surprised about that we talk about are toxic towns in America. And toxic towns are places that have been abandoned because they're so polluted people can't live there. Uh, and students are come some very surprised to find out that such places exist in the United States. But we can we create a whole list and we go through them. We also show them that it's not just in the United States, but other countries that toxic towns exist.